Hello and welcome to lesson 16.2 in the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve and today we will be looking at clock arithmetic. Now in lesson 16.1 we looked at modular arithmetic and uh, kind of came up with some functions and some calculations that we could do to pull places out of numbers. So if we had a four digit number we could pull out the number in the thousands place or the hundreds place. And our goal today is really twofold. The first part is less modular arithmetic and more just simple mathematics. We're going to write functions that can convert time. For example, take the number of, uh, given a number of minutes, convert that to how many hours are in that many minutes, or given a number of hours, convert how many seconds are in that number of hours, or simple mathematics like that. Uh, but then we're going to move on to clock arithmetic, which is also a really simple concept. If you think about, say, maybe a time like 10 p.m., if you add four hours to 10 p.m., you end up with 2 a.m. Well, really, what you're doing is you're taking 10 and adding four. That should give you 14 o'clock, but of course there's no 14 o'clock, so using modular arithmetic, we can make sure that our clock never goes beyond the 12-hour mark, or if you're using military time, never goes over the 24-hour mark. And then we'll wrap it up with a challenge program which is the semblance of kind of maybe an early text adventure game. And uh, you can probably have some fun with it. And, and definitely with the other lessons combined, you could write a simple but interesting text adventure game with all the stuff that we have put together. So let's go ahead and get started with the clock arithmetic lesson. So to get started, we're just going to write a couple of functions to convert time. I'm going to start by writing a function that can take a given number of hours and return the number of minutes that are in that number of hours. So I'm going to define a new function and I'm going to call this minutes in hours. And in order for this to work, I'm going to need to provide a, an argument or uh, I'm going to have to provide a parameter in my definition and that is the number of hours that I want to convert. I'm always going to start my functions out with a simple comment. So this will return the number of minutes in a given number of hours. The math on this is really simple. There are 60 minutes in every hour. So if there's one hour, that means 60 minutes. If there's two hours, that's 120 minutes. Minutes is going to be equal to the number of hours times 60. Once we've done that calculation, I can simply return minutes. That's all there is to the minutes to hours conversion, and let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to go ahead and save my program as test.py. And over in my Python shell, I take minutes in hours, and I know there's 60 minutes in one hour, and of course that does return 60, so we're good there. I want minutes in hours, say four. There are 240 minutes in four hours. And this function is working correctly. And 10 hours, there's 600 minutes. So by writing this function, I can easily convert the number of minutes uh, or a given number of hours to their number of minutes. And I can do the same kind of thing. Um, let's write another function that takes, gives you the number of seconds in a given number of hours. Just like the minutes and hours function, I'm going to need to provide a number of hours as a parameter. And in order to get the number of seconds that exist in an hour, I'm just going to do minutes equals hours times 60. And of course, there's 60 seconds in every minute. So seconds is going to equal minutes times 60 and then I'm going to return the number of seconds based on that calculation. Also need to add my comment here, return the number of seconds in a given number of hours. And let's go ahead and run this program and see if this is working correctly. So I'm going to do seconds in hours and in one hour there's 3600 seconds and that makes sense because there are 60 minutes in one hour and 60 times 60 is 3600. So I can say seconds in hours and let's say you had a 24 hour day 
there's 86,400 seconds in a 24-hour period. So that is working correctly as well. Remember, we can also use nested functions to make sure that we have to change as little code as possible. Right now, if I needed both of these for the program I was writing, I've got minutes and hours and I got minutes, uh, seconds and hours. Well, what might happen is I might say, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I thought there were 54 minutes in every hour. So, gosh, that's a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. In order to fix this problem, I would have to find two broken lines of code. It, this line, converting minutes to hours, exists in the minutes to hours function, and it also exists in the second to hours function. So, right now I've got two bugs in this program that are going to make debugging it a little bit different. If I use a nested loop and say minutes equals minutes in hours, I already know how many hours that I want to convert because I've got it here as one of the parameters. Instead of doing the mathematical calculations inside this function, I'm going to call my minutes and hours function. And let's go ahead and test this out. Seconds in hours one. I get the exact same answer there. 24. I get the same answer there. So it's doing the exact same mathematical calculations. The only difference is if this mathematical function, or if this mathematical calculation is incorrect, all I have to do is fix it here in one line of code and it's updated in my second function. So again, nested functions make debugging your program a lot more painless and you should definitely use them whenever possible. Don't try and do multiple arith arithmetic uh, calculations. Just do them once and then call them from your other functions. The last thing we might want to do is go the other way. We might want to return the number of hours in a given number of seconds. In order to do that, I have to provide a parameter to my function, and that is going to be how many seconds do we want to convert into hours. And this function will return the number of hours in a given number of seconds. We use multiplica multiplication to work our way from hours down to minutes and hours down to seconds, so we're just going to use division to work our way from seconds to hours. In order to get a the number of minutes in a given number of seconds, I'm just going to take the number of seconds and do integer division by 60. And if you do the math in your head, if you have 60 seconds and you divide it by 60, that equals 1. That's 1 minute. If you had 120 seconds, that's 2 minutes, and 120 divided by 60 is 2, so that's where we're getting the number of minutes from. Do the exact same thing to get the number of hours. I'm going to take hours and calculate that by taking minutes, which we just uh, did on the previous line of code, and dividing that by 60. And finally, I'm going to return hours. So let's go ahead and uh, run this program and test this new function. So hours and seconds, 3,600, that should give me one. Hours in seconds, 7,200 should give me two. And it does. The problem with this function, particularly going from a small number to the larger numbers, is that it's, it can get wildly inaccurate. And that's because of the integer division that I have in there right now. You can see hours and seconds up here did tell me that 3,600 seconds equals one hour. And that is correct. But if I did hours in seconds, and we're very close, let's say 3589, we are just 11 seconds short of an entire hour. When I run this function right here, it's going to return zero. Because of the way the integer division works, I don't have enough seconds to equal one hour. And it's always going to round down. It is always going to truncate the decimal points that are created when we do these mathematical calculations. So one way to fix this, instead of doing integer division, would be to do traditional division. If I change those symbols to traditional divisions, it will calculate as floats instead of integers. 
And now if I do hours in seconds, 3589, I'm going to get a, a larger float number. Now what you have to decide for the programs you're writing, what is most appropriate? Saying to someone, oh gosh, you know, it's 0.9969 hours, that's not necessarily something that would be normally said in conversation. But saying that there are zero hours and 3,589 seconds is also wildly inaccurate. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of program am I writing? What kind of accuracy do I need? And then maybe you can do some uh, different types of uh, calculations based on this to make your program work a little bit more effectively. For example, uh, right now, this number right here isn't really workable, but maybe what I want to do is round that number. I can do that with the simple round function provided in Python. So I can say hours equals round the number of hours. And by default, this will round it to the nearest integer. So 0.9969 will round to 1. And when I run this function now, I can say hours in seconds. 3589, whoops, and it's rounding up to 1. I can also provide an argument into my round function, Let's say hours in seconds, 3589. I see I'm getting 1.0. That means uh, that argument of 1 says I want hours rounded to the nearest single decimal point which of course 0.99 rounds up to 1.0 but if I did hours in seconds whoops, hours in seconds and I have a number that's not quite so close to 1 let's say 2456 and see that's 0 0.7 hours so I, in my function I can I can round this and there's some more efficient ways to do that um, I could add the round command here in the calculation I could really do this as a, all as one line of code, but again, do what makes sense to you and do what is easiest for you to visualize. So that is some simple uh, number conversion or time conversion here, taking hours, seconds, and then you could easily add days, months, years. And this is the building block of creating time systems for the games that you write. Um, building in a day and night cycle, you know, have, being able to do these conversions is an important skill when you're adding those features to your games.